it's me, Tammy, with Real Southern Woman. I'm eating a peanut butter cookie, drinking milk, and we're about to do a Bible study. I've had a good day. I hope you have as well. We're going to open up our Jesus, Our Perfect Hope by Charles Stanley. But let's eat a cookie first. Me and Chris went to, um, we went to Panda Express and ate supper. And then we went to Best Buy and I got a new modem and I'm hoping my internet's going to pick up much better with it. I didn't know it, but the modems are actually made so that if you're running more than one device, different modems can carry so many devices. Well, each of us have a cell phone. Each of us have a laptop. I actually have two laptops that I use. And then we have a desktop. Then we have two um, iPads. And the kids have gaming systems. That's a lot of devices. So I got a modem tonight that's supposed to carry 24 devices and 8 on uh, uploads. So hopefully our reception will be better. I'm going to hook it up tomorrow. I got 15 days to decide if it's worth it. Milk on ice. Chris is drinking coffee. And I'm eating my cookie. I um, know I didn't make these cookies either. We've been lazy. I, um, Chris bought these the other night. They're Pillsbury cutoffs. You know, the kind you cut and bake. I love their peanut butter. I know it can't be good for me, but it sure does taste good. Anyway. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Donna. I think I got two Donnas on here. Okay. Last bite. Hebrew 11 is where we're going to be. If y'all want to open up your word. Oh, that's so good. I'm terrible eating cookies at 8.53. Okay, Hebrew 11. Let's look it up. Hebrew is actually a book in the Bible that's written for the Jewish nation or Jews. Jewish believers, Jewish believers Chris said. I never say anything right. People get on to me a lot, but yeah, I don't, I just, I'm, I don't do it on purpose. I just don't know what I'm, you know, always know what I'm talking about. Um, this says faith defined in this kid Bible, teenager Bible. This says, this is what Charles Stanley says. He says, without faith, oh my goodness, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We've all heard this verse. Without faith, Faith, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I keep saying faith instead of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So it, it's saying without faith, it's impossible to please God because without faith, you wouldn't believe in him anyway, right? Which is true. Um, this comes out of Hebrew 11.6. Let's read it out of our Bible. Hebrew 11.6. Because they're always doing NIV and stuff. I mean, it's all the same, you know. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And we're seeking him tonight, aren't we? That should make us... Uh, Feel glad because let me tell you this, as a parent in, in a, the 
God is our parent, and, you know, he's our heavenly father. I'm sure that he is pleased to see us seeking him when we could be doing so many other things, right? So, let's see what Charles Stanley says about this. It says, today there will be opportunities for you. Well, today is gone. So, just pretend like this is tomorrow, I guess. I guess he thinks we read these in the morning. Today there will be opportunities for you to put today's verse. Hebrew 11.6 into practice in ways that will shape the character of your life. Um, this is because without faith, without trust in God, that results in obedience. It is not possible to honor the Lord. First, you must believe that he is or that he exists. You may believe in God with your mind, but do you demonstrate it with your life? For example... If he asks you to give up everything today, do you trust that he'll provide what you need tomorrow? Lord, I'd hate for him to ask me that, but I would trust him, I would hope. But Lord, that's a big thing to say, isn't it? Why can't he give us a better example like, um, not everything, like Job had to do, but let's just say he told us, to give up our car today, would we trust him that we'd get away for transportation tomorrow? That sounds a lot better than everything, don't it? And that reminds me, um, the other night, because I don't really know everything, you know. The other night we were watching the news, and they had a little cross on their forehead, because we watch Fox 5. Yes, we're conservatives. And um, I was like, Chris, what is that? And he said, it's Ash Wednesday. So I went and... Online, of course, I read about Ash Wednesday, and it said that um, those, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was the Catholic faith, isn't it, Chris? Well, anyway, for Ash Wednesday, it doesn't have to be Catholic, it can be any believer. If they want to, uh, if they want to, they can take the 40 days before Easter, and let it be a time uh, to think about the death and the resurrection. And what they do is every Friday they don't eat meat. And then, I, and then on Ash Wednesday they don't eat meat either. And, um, and a lot of people will sacrifice different things for uh, their 40 days. You know, let's say they sacrifice their telephone or they sacrifice chocolate if you're a woman, you know. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting because it would make you think of him. I mean, you know, we've never been, I was raised Baptist, and we never had to sacrifice anything. We ate like pigs, you know what I mean? And we never sacrificed, and we never, we never fasted or anything like that. But I will say that I would think that if you did something like that, it would have to impact your faith and your belief because you would uh, be thinking of, on him a lot more, just in general. Um, but that just made me think of that, since he said, you know, what if we gave up something? So second, you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And uh, that his character is trustworthy, and he always works for your benefit. And then it's his friend. It isn't, it isn't, when everything is going well, that it is difficult to have faith. Rather, it is when your world falls apart that you'll be tempted to doubt that God is in control and that he'll work everything for your good. But regardless of what's happening today, set your heart to have faith. God has never let you down and he never will. He, his way will always be the best. And then he finishes off with, Jesus, I believe you exist and that you always work for my good. Help my unbelief. Amen. And, uh, and I believe all things work to good, you know, for the good. But I do believe that good people go through bad things. And uh, there's, who knows every reason for it? I mean, for heaven's sakes, we all go through things. And different things in our life, and you're thinking, why? Did this happen to me, or why did I, you know, why did it have to be this way? But it's not our place to say why. I mean, you can. I don't think he gets mad at us for it. There's several men in the Bible that question God. I just think that um, 
You just have to believe that he's in control. And not everything's always going to be something that you like. Um, in order to get something done in you that he needs done for the future. Jeanette says, I'm from Portland, stuck in traffic and listening as I crawl along. Bless your heart. Love hearing your Bible study. Thank you. Francis Bobo. We used to have a guy, his name wasn't Bobo, though, was it, Chris? That guy that was in our Sunday school class. Was his last name Bobo? He's not listening to me. He's got his earphones on. Anyway, we used to have a guy named Bobo in our class. But he lived in Hiram, Georgia. Francis. Um, so anyway, I'm sure with all the people we've got on here tonight, we can all think of something that we've been through that was not something we think we should have had to go through, but for some reason we did. Even if you're young, teenagers even go through things. Even young children go through th things. It's amazing what kids can endure. Matter of fact, I think kids have an easier time enduring bad things than adults do because, um... I just do. I know I could, as a young child, I could, and even a young girl, I could just about endure anything. And now, if Chris looks at me wrong, you know, if he were to ever yell at me or be ugly to me, truly ugly to me, it would break my heart. I don't even know what, it, I would just lose it, you know. And when I was young, when you're young, you know, things are just different. And, uh, but anyway. I told him tonight, we had somebody text us and say that she and her husband had um, went online and bought several items through our links and bought uh, a KitchenAid mixer and um, I can't remember what else she said she bought. But anyway, she said that her husband was so, uh, enjoyed our, our videos, my and Chris's videos, so much that he has been encouraged to get in the kitchen and cook. And she's excited because he don't normally do that. And so they're wanting to try these recipes and he's got the cookbooks. He's going through them. And can you believe that her husband is wanting to get in the kitchen and cook for her? And she has fibromyalgia like I do. And she says, oh, it's going to be the hu a huge blessing. And she's excited about it. So y'all pray for them. That, um, that he will do well in the kitchen for her. And that she will, um, that they would just work well together. Because, I mean, me and Chris cook. Most of the time, though, when really when we cook, he's either cooking or I'm cooking. We don't cook a whole lot together. We do a little bit. Like, he'll do one thing while I do something else. Uh, but for the most part, uh, if he's in the kitchen, I'm not. Or if I'm in the kitchen, he's not. Unless we're grilling or doing something like that. Sometimes we team up. Um Anyway, I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's Bible lesson, and I'm excited for them. And I looked at Chris tonight, and I said, Chris, can you believe that we encouraged, you know, somebody to get in the kitchen and cook with his, you know, wife? And, and he was like, and I said, um, you're just a good man, and you're good to me, and people can tell that you're good to me. And I think it's an encouragement. And I can't remember what he said. He made some stupid, you know, joke. But um, it is true. He really is good to me, y'all. He's a wonderful husband. And I believe that I'm a good wife to him. And uh, I know I'm not perfect and I'm mouthy and all that. But uh, I don't get a lot of, I, I can't be a whole lot of mouthy with him because he don't allow it. But I can guarantee you if he had allowed it in the beginning, it would have happened because it's my personality. Um, so he cut it off real quick. Let me know how far I could go. You know what I mean? So he's the man, believe it or not. Everybody probably thinks, oh, you run him and I do not. He is the man in this house. And I think it's fine that he's the man. I think it's fine to say a man's a man. I think it's fine for us to believe that our men 
are important because they are. And um, I think a lot of people have lost that. They've lost, um, they think that they're independent. They think that they don't need someone, whether it be a man or a woman. I think that we all need somebody and I can guarantee you that we're happier with a partner. And I do mean a man and a woman and a woman and a man. Not, I'm sorry, but that's just how I believe. And I believe that we're all happier with God in our life as well. If you uh, can love with God's agape love, your spouse, then it is amazing uh, how much more you love each other. Um, because through Christ, we have a lot stronger love than through our flesh and, and our regular self. And so I, I try to tell the kids sometimes when they have friends whose parents aren't getting along or whose parents are divorced or whatever. And I say, look, if it weren't for me, if it weren't for God in our life, me and your daddy wouldn't be the way we are. And we wouldn't have the same house that we do. And it wouldn't be pleasant here all the time. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, you know, it's not always pleasant because most of the time, um, but now that we have our schedule, it's so much better. <laughs> I just love it. Well, let me just see if this has anything fun to, to read. Instant access. Let's read this little thing out of this teen Bible. It says, living a Christian life isn't easy, and it can be really hard. And that is when you need the support of Christian friends. But how do you get that support? First of all, make sure you get together regularly. Maybe at church, maybe at an after-school club, or maybe on your own with two or three Christian friends. This is a teen Bible. It says, what can you do when you get together? Talk about what's happening in your lives. Encourage one another on, uh, encourage one another toward love and to good works. Hebrews 10, 24, it is a lot easier to stand firm in your Christian commitment if you know other teens are standing beside you. And, of course, that would apply as adults in our lives as well. Now, I will say this to you girls and boys, and I do mean men and women. It's fine to have a Christian friend of the opposite sex, but it is not fine to have a uh, for you to be an intimate friend. In other words, you don't need to tell someone of the opposite sex personal and um, personal experiences and opinions about your marriage. Period. End of story. Never do it. Never. I don't care if you work with them every day, eight hours and ten hours a day. It crosses a line. Um, you're supposed to be a Christian friend, and you're supposed to be there to give them advice, whatever, but it shouldn't go into a personal type relationship, because sometimes, and lots of times, if you ever hear of an affair, whether it's at church, yeah, it happens at church, or it's at work, or it's a neighbor, or whatever the case may be, it is because that started, continued and then they had an intimate relationship before they ever even knew it. And you had to be very, very careful. So if you want to talk about your spouse, you don't need to talk to anybody but your spouse or maybe a sibling <laughs> or a good uh, friend of the same sex. How's that? Um Brenda says that she just lost her husband to death and that she is lost without him. And we were never apart. He was so important to me. Bless her heart. Brenda, you are not the first person that I've heard that from over the last couple of weeks. There's another girl who's lost her husband as well. That is so sad. There's a lot of people. Um, Donna Davis is on here. She lost hers February 3rd, 19th. I believe it was Donna. So there's more than one of you who just lost a spouse, and I cannot imagine what you're going through. I don't know how how you feel on the inside because it hasn't happened to me. Um, and so 
Oh, I, I mean, the only thing I can say is if you trust in God, you know that God's in control. You know that he has a time and a place for you to be born, and he has a time and a place for you to die. And you have to totally trust that he knows what's best for your life, your life, your spouse's life, your children's life, your family's life, everybody's life. God is in control. Don't get angry because he took your spouse. Because he wasn't yours to start with. You know, God allows us to be with each other while we're here. But we really belong to him, not each other. So, um, I mean, it's hard for me to give advice when I don't know what it feels like. But I know who does, and that's Jesus Christ. He knows how we all feel. Our, and the Holy Spirit that resides in you knows how you feel. And even when you don't even know how to explain what you need to God, the Holy Spirit will do it for you. So all I know to say is um, it is so hard for me to really know what to say. Besides, you just have to believe that he knows best and that it's okay and that you're going to get through it. And, and it's okay to cry and it's okay to be angry and it's okay to be happy and it's okay to be, you know, it's okay to miss them. And, and it's just like when we went through cancer there was so many uh, phases that you go through. You go through denial. You go through acceptance. You go through anger. You go through um, jealousy of other people that might have their spouse. Um, I mean, there's just all those feelings, and it's okay. Don't ever feel like it's not okay. Don't ever feel like you're wrong or you're sinning because of the way you feel. Because you're supposed to feel that way and you're going to have those thoughts and those feelings and it's okay to do it. So I would just say, um, you know, cry, let it out, scream if you have to. Um, and eventually as time goes by, I would think, I, I don't think you'll ever forget them or ever completely get over it, but I think that time will heal some and of course stay in God's word and stay close to him and don't run from him because of your situation because you need him now more than any time you've ever needed him so my heart goes out to you Donna and let me see it was Donna and let's see Brenda Donna and Brenda let's keep both of them in our prayers and know that um I just can't imagine. I think sometimes if something happened to Chris on his way home or whatever, I mean, I know my life would be completely different. I really don't have a clue what I would do. Uh, there's so many things I do in my life every day for him. And I know I've got kids, but they're almost grown. Um, and I know me well enough to know I'd probably move closer to family. And I'd probably be more with family every day and I just would have to because I'm that kind of person. I do like to be around somebody. I'm not one to have a lot of friends, not girlfriends, because women are drama queens. I, I'm i sorry, but that's just the way it is. I love family and I love, I mean, family, I like people who love me unconditionally. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, I want you to love me unconditionally. And if you can't love me unconditionally, I'm not interested. Um, so that's why I like family so much. Um, so I'd probably get closer to some of them, move closer to them and spend some time with them. Uh, I really miss my cousin, Felicia, and I miss my sister a lot. And so, you know, grab a hold of somebody, hopefully. I remember when my best friend, Ella, lost, well, she didn't lose her husband. She left him. And um, I Huh? Anyway, that first year, it was really hard on her. And me and uh, she spent a lot of time here. And, um, and uh, she needed to be here. She needed it for herself. And it's okay. And it was okay for me and Chris. We understood that. And now, you know, she's not over here as much. And, and um, she's gotten used to her life without him. And, um, and so now she can, you know, cope better. And that's just something you're going to have to do. But please reach out. Go to a community. Um, if you don't have a lot of friends, go to church. 
meet some ladies, go to, uh, they have like uh, county community um, group meetings and stuff if you're older, like, I mean, if you're older like we are. Um, they have all kinds of stuff. Don't go to Silver Sneakers, for heaven's sakes. Everybody can get in that if you're on Medicare, if you're old enough. Uh, do something to try to find somebody to hang out with. It helps a lot. Let's say our prayers and let's keep Brenda and Donna in our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for the life that you've given us here on this earth. And we thank you for our spouses and our families that we have uh, been blessed to have. Um, we understand that we all belong to you and that you do let us borrow these. And we should be encouraged just by the fact of the time that we have got to have them. It's a lot easier said when you haven't lost one. But I would hope that if something happened to one of my children or my husband, that I could be thankful for the time that I did have with them. And I would try uh, to keep my mind on positive things as much as I could to help me get through it. Because you, Lord, are in control. And I totally believe that you are over everything in this world and out of this world. I mean, you are a God of all the different um, dimensions. And I mean, you're not just in one little place. So you know best for all of us. And what matters most to you is that we love you with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul, and that we spread your gospel. And I pray for Donna, and I pray for Brenda, that you would be with them during this hard, hard time. I pray that the Holy Spirit would um, help them and give them the strength that they need each and every day. I pray that they will reach out to people and not sit at home and um, be secluded and become too depressed that they would actually go out and try to find some friends to hang out with. Um, or family, and don't, I, I pray that you would help them know that it's not, not to be embarrassed, you know, that they should let people know how they feel, and if they need to be with somebody, it's okay to tell somebody that. Um, just be with all of us, help us be Christians, help us shine our lights, help us spread your gospel, praise the Lord for Jesus Christ who died on that cross, who gives us the blessed hope of eternal life and I pray that both of these men that have left this world are in your world in heaven now and that that they are in just a wonderful splendor place what a wonderful thing it really is to die when you're a Christian it is a blessing a blessing like none of us have ever experienced and we won't until the day comes so may we just rejoice in that and keep our thoughts on good thoughts in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good evening. I love all of y'all. I really do. And I pray for you at night. You are special to me, even if we don't know each other, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one per se. But I can guarantee you that in a lot of ways we do. Uh, we see each other's comments. We see each other's names. And it matters to me. And it matters to Chris. And we do think on uh, we do care about y'all, and um, I, I know y'all care about us, and it's wonderful to have Christian friends all over the world. Um, this world is a very small place when you really get to thinking about how people from different worlds come together through technology, and a lot of people uh, give technology a bad rep, but you know what? It's a wonderful thing, and it's a good thing tonight. That we've all come together to lean on each other, love each other, and love God. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.